Bluff City Media presents the Two Buck Sports Show. Stepping up to the microphone are your hosts, Drew Gann and Rusty Witten. Now, let's get to the show. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the very first edition of the Two Buck Sports Show, a part of the Bluff City Media Network. I am, I am your co-host, Rusty Buckets. Check it in here with my colleague, Uncle Buck. Uncle Buck, we haven't been this excited since the Dollar General marked down the Christmas tree cakes at the end of the season, man. I'm so <laughs> fired up to be here tonight. What's up, brother? Man, it is a great day to be alive. You know, that was a sad day because the uh, the Dollar General here in Ripley, Mississippi, there were no Christmas tree cakes left by the time Christmas oh, got here. That's because <laughs> they were all in the game house. <laughs> so, yeah, we stocked up. Found another box the other day. But, yeah, Rusty, we could not be happier to be here. We teased it. At, we broke the news yesterday to everybody on our social media platforms. The Two Bucks Sports Show is now proudly brought to you as a member of the Bluff City Media Group. I know we just could not be happier. If you look at what this looks like today on your computer screen, on your phone screen, whatever you're looking at, this environment that we're in right now, as beautiful as it looks, you know if you've been a listener to the show, we could not do this ourselves. So we got to thank Mark <laughs> and the gang at, yes. at Bluff City Media for helping us look like professionals because everybody here knows we're not. Absolutely. So I was talking about that today. I was hanging out with some coworkers and they were asking me about the show and what it was going to look like. And I pulled up our Instagram and I was like, all right, this is what it looks like when two rednecks from North Mississippi do it. I've done that too. This is what it looks like now because the video is like, it's starkly different. So again, shout out. We'll get into it here in a few minutes. Big shout out to Mark, Kenny, all the guys over at Bluff City Media. We're going to raise a toast to y'all right now. Thank y'all for taking yes, a chance on two good old boys. We appreciate y'all. Looking forward to some growth. You know, it's funny, Rusty. Yeah, everybody's going to have to bear with us for a little bit because we're two good old boys from Mississippi talking about sports. And we have been on directing this podcast as if we're driving like a 1980s Plymouth, okay? Like, <laughs> there's no bells and whistles on that old podcast that we used to do. But here on the Two Bucks Sports Show, it's like they handed Rusty and I keys to a spaceship. So <laughs> we've got some buttons we've got to push. We've got some banners. We've got all kinds of stuff, all kinds of new toys. Just bear with us. Look at there. First one up, baby. Across the bottom <laughs> of the screen right there. You That even shows you where you can find us on Instagram and Twitter. Yes, so, sir. While you're thinking about it, just go ahead and follow us right there. Yeah, so we kind of want to take a few minutes, too, for we probably have a lot of new listeners, a lot of new watchers, a lot of new people to the show, and kind of want to introduce ourselves, who we are, kind of what we do. Uh, we'll get into kind of some history and stuff as well in the first little bit. So our show, we typically start with some non-sports banter, kind of warm it up. We have a lot of, like, friends that don't necessarily care about sports or our friends, wives or girlfriends that'll watch the first segment. Mothers. Or yeah. mothers. Yep. Shout out Mama Lee, Mama Vicky out there. We'll yes, get a man. good, they'll listen to the beginning and then they'll just tune out because they don't care about sports. So this is kind of where we, we, we talk about just life in general. And so we wanted to take tonight and kind of introduce ourselves again. I am Rusty Buckets. It's an old high school nickname. If you want to know that story, ask me off air. Um, I'm a doctor of physical therapy. I'm, I am a doctor, but not the kind that gets paid a whole lot. I'm just the one with right. the title. I'm like, I'm a step above, like a mathematician. Shout out to our mathematicians right. out there. Um, yeah. All but yeah, I'm, yeah, all of them, all one all of them listening to the show. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm a doctor of physical therapy. I originally born and raised in, in, in born in South central Mississippi, grew up in Northeast Mississippi, but a uh, big Mississippi state fan, diehard Grizz fan. I'm a tried and wool Cubs fan. Don't hold that against me if you like any of those other teams. And Drew, my, my colleague here, we only agree on one of those teams, and we'll let y'all figure out which one it is based on what we're wearing tonight. But that's right. me in a nutshell. Um, I'm currently stationed in Martin, Tennessee, doing some training for a new job. But uh, the plan is to get back to Corinth, Mississippi as quickly as possible. So, Uncle Buck, tell them about yourself. Yeah, I'm Uncle Buck. Uh, my wife calls me Drew. Uh, Uncle Buck just came out of uh, – a pure desire of when my niece, my first niece was born. I did not want to be called uncle drew. I'm not a big Kyrie Irving fan. He had had the movies. He had the YouTube stuff. I was like, I don't want to be called uncle drew. Uh, and so I just kind of decided at that point, I was going to model my uncleship as John candy. Why not? As uncle buck, you know? And so that's what I wanted to be called. It's kind of stuck because I had a lot of nieces and nephews before I had children of my own. And so nieces and nephews called me uncle buck, which allowed my, my cousin's kids to call me Uncle Buck before long, just everybody called me Uncle Buck. Um, and so Buck and Buckets, that's your two bucks. 
uh, makes perfect sense now. So I am an electrical engineer. I am responsible in part for the power grid in Tippa County, Mississippi, in Ripley. And um, he's my favorite yeah, power. Yeah, I am a power ranger. Um, and so uh, that's my day job. But this is uh, the job that, uh, yeah, I don't say it lightly. Uh, it's a lot more fun. But it's <laughs> uh, so I love my job, but this is it. Here's my boy, Ted. You can see my, my, uh, our my, mascot of the podcast there. The mascot of the Two Bucks Sports Podcast. But yeah, as Sports Rusty show now. <laughs> Two Bucks Sports Show. Um, as Rusty alluded to earlier, uh, we start every single show uh kind of off sports. Uh this is live. We we talk about our families, we talk about everything, we talk about what's the best thing that happened this week and the worst thing that happened this week. And we start tonight with our Bucks best of the week. Uh watch here, Rusty. Bucks best of the week. Let's hey, we got go. we got titles, we got buttons to push. Here we go. Let's go. Rusty, our best of the week. We actually have a mutual best of the week. Normally, we don't cop out. We'll each have one that we come up with throughout the week. But this week, it's kind of obvious, right? So our podcast, we started over a year ago. I'll let Drew kind of get to that here in just a bit. But um, back at the first of the year, we was just in minding our own business, right? Just living life. And I got a tweet from one of our good friends, friend of the podcast, our first official shout out as part of the Busted Media family, goes to BJ Barry Hill, friend of ours in Memphis who just happened to tweet me and the Grizz 901 podcast, another fantastic uh, show on this network. They do the post-game shows. If you're listening to this, hopefully you've already watched our esteemed colleague here, Uncle Buck, on the Grizz 901 podcast. What would be tonight, if you're listening to this tomorrow, last night after the Timberwolves game. Anyway. You'll still be able to watch it on YouTube. That's it. That's it. So uh, tweeted us. That's it tweeted us about the Grizz injury report. And there was just a few Twitter exchanges back and forth, a few tweets, X, whatever it's called now. Still feel weird calling it X. But at any rate, yeah. we just connected, and I thought that was it. And about 15 minutes later, uh, Daniel and and, the, and Nate tweeted out, hey, stumbled into this cool new podcast and shouted us and, and our podcast out, and it just kind of blew up from there. Within 30 minutes, we had a message from Mark. And the Bluff City Media team, hey, we're always looking to expand our network. If y'all are interested in talking, letting us know. And I was in the middle of some flights and some airport exchange for whatever reason. Um, and Drew took over and kind of had that conversation. And then a couple of days later, we had about an hour long phone conversation. And as soon as we hung up with Mark, we were like, this is it, man. Like, this is where oh, yeah. we need to be. Like, this is such a great opportunity. This is a great next step for our podcast. It's going to bring us growth. I think we can add value and and the ball started rolling from there, and so effective January one, like we were, we could not have waited any longer. Like Saturday to Monday, we got them signed. I'm in a hotel lobby, printing it out, signing it, getting it sent back in, and we officially joined the Bluff City Media Network on January first, 2024, and just couldn't again, like we've said numerous times, like extremely humbled yet eternally grateful for this opportunity just right. to see where it goes. Yeah, and it's it's really. You do, you like to see progress. You like uh, right. you know, you live your life. You like to start here, and you want to end further down the road than where you're at. And and this podcast for us started. We've been best friends for ten years now, uh, yeah. at least. And uh, you know, it started as a pretty much weekly phone call that Rusty and I would share at least once a week. We would just talk crap to each other about our teams that we disagree on, and about fantasy football, and about the Grizzlies, and. Rusty one day just called me and he was like, what if we started a podcast? And my first reaction was like, no, everybody's got a podcast. I don't right. want to be the guy that has the podcast. You know, everybody, one of thousands, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but my wife had mentioned it to me in passing in the in the past. And so I was like, what's the worst that could happen? You know, we're going to have the same conversation anyways. We might as well record it and see what happens. See what happens. And, uh, and so that's been a, over a year ago. I think we started, uh, I think the Egg Bowl of 22 was our first recording or there about that time. It was right after um, Keith passed away, which we we dedicated that episode. Right. We'll dedicate this one to a good friend of ours who won his battle with cancer. But um, it was right after he passed in early November 2022. Yeah. Okay. And so uh, to see where we're at now, man, we could not be, sto we could not be more excited. <laughs> it is definitely our Bucks best of the week. It's going to be our Bucks best of the year. Uh, we just we're over the moon right now. We cannot wait for everybody to to really start getting used to seeing the Two Bucks Sports Show on YouTube every single Friday at 3 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube page. 
you know, and it's just cool, Drew, because like how many times have we said on the show for our longtime listeners, like, listen, we're doing this for us, for us to stay in touch, to talk crap, right. for a creative outlet, just a de-stress during the week. Even if it's just we get two listens a week, me, you, maybe four, because right. our mama's in five with Haley listening. <laughs> yeah. Like, Even if that's all we get, we're still going to do it because it's fun. Right? And just to see the growth that has happened. And now, like. With and for it to be media. so organic, right? You know, you know it's not like, forced, you know? right? It just it just happened to to work out, and to see what we'll be able to do with Plus City Media and the impact and the reach that they already have, just what could not be more us. excited. I yeah, mean, oh, yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I I think they're going to add a lot more value to us than we'll add to them. Like I said in our intro video, like we're just as confused as anybody while we're here, but we're grateful to be here, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's kind of like yeah. Ross Bjork. He just keeps on stumbling forward. You right. Know? <laughs> like I've never seen somebody be so bad at a job yet get promotions, and here we are. Right. <laughs> right. So uh, whatever whatever practical joke you guys are playing on me and Rusty, keep doing it because we're loving yeah, it. So absolutely. Uh, we do transition out of the Bucks best of the week every week to our beef of the week. And our beef of the week is just kind of what's griped us. Uh, yeah. Rusty, you want to start? You want me to start? How, how, I, how, how much do you need to get this off your chest? I, pretty bad. This is eating at me, man. It's something that's it's, it's an issue that you and I both struggle with. It's an issue that a lot of our listeners. Reaching the top shelf? No, I ain't got no problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> you, I'm 6'5", man. I can reach anything. <laughs> um, I've got but, a five in my height. Yeah. <laughs> so the six, five, like it helps me with this problem, but it doesn't always when I sit down and I'm talking about hair loss. I am 36 years old and yeah. my hair wear hats is, for a reason. People. That's it. I learned a new term this week. I'll get into that. It's part of my, my beef for the week. So hair loss. So like Drew, you know, my family, you've seen my mama and my daddy mm -hmm. and my brother. They all have these thick, got luscious head of hair. Head of hair. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm 36. I'm very blessed and fortunate to have three of my four grandparents still living. They all have mm -hmm. good heads of hair. My one grandfather who passed away had a great head of hair until he passed away. I don't know what line I got in when I was going to be born out of heaven, but I got in the wrong one. I got yeah. the genetic short end of the straw because my hair is thinning. Yeah, and show us all. No, I mean, look, it's like, like, see, it's like thinning. Further. See that? Like, oh, it's there's thinning. the line. Right. Like it's, <laughs> it's way back there. I've always had a big forehead. Like it's always been like a big eight head, but now it's getting thin. And so like being tall hides it. Like I'm good when I'm standing up. Yeah. When I sit down working on a patient or doing notes, I, I've had multiple coworkers this week, multiple friends be like, look, man, when are you going to give it up? And I learned yeah. a new term this week. One of my friends told me there's a term called hatfish. It's like catfish yeah. when, you know, you hide behind like a pretty face, but you really, you, you ugly. Well, if you wear a hat to hide your hair, that's called a hatfish, right? Because like, I look better with in this case. Right. <laughs> right, because I look better with a hat on because you can't see my receding hairline and my thinning hair. Apparently, yeah. I'm a hatfish. So uh, my beef of the week you know, is my genetic short end of the stick where I am losing my daggum hair and I have to hide it behind this great hat. But there is a solution. Know, I am going to cut my hair off probably this weekend and, and just go ahead and lose that battle. Oh, are you really? I think so. I'm just tired of it, man. I get I'm like literally like every gotta, couple of days. Gotta do it for the like, Instagram now. That's it, man. Uh, it's listen, out there. I got to do it. I've got a beef, uh, but this is uh, this is another beef off your beef that I'm gonna that I'm gonna interject here, and it's people that are six five complaining about hair loss because <laughs> as you said in your own description of this, I'm six five. Nobody can see it when I'm standing up. I'm five five. Everybody sees it at all times. I don't want to hear about your first world problems. It's like Bill Gates complaining about how much he gets taxed every year. Like I don't want to hear any of that. Like I wear a hat because you could directly count the hairs on the top of my head from while I am standing up as straight and as tall as I can. Like, it, 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 on no hiding. Like I couldn't stand in a chair and Rusty <laughs> could still see the top of my head. You know, it, it it's like a twins situation, except he's yeah, ne nearly as strong as Arnold Schwarzenegger or as good looking as Arnold Schwarzenegger. And <laughs> I'm not that. nearly as dumpy and ugly as Danny DeVito. <laughs> But you see the comparison, six four, five five ish. Uh, I wear boots to get to five five. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I don't want to hear any of that beef. You, you, tall people can shave their head. Short people look like cue balls. If they <laughs> shave their head. You would also look better bald than I would look bald. So. I do have a lumpy head. My head's not symmetrical. There's some lumps and bumps from many things over the years. But you know and what? Nobody will see. Again, I'm about to say, way up there. I might get some frost up there, but I ain't gonna, nobody going to see it. <laughs> yeah. You're going to have to uh, title the podcast uh, Hat Fishing 
uh, today. So that's that's um, gonna be our thumbnail. It's gonna be hat fished. <laughs> yeah. So uh, my beef is just this weather. Listen, yeah. I, it has been snowing and cold to the point to where, like, it snowed Sunday night here in North Mississippi. It snowed Sunday night anywhere in the mid south. Um, my dog is just going to town in his collar right now. Uh, sorry <laughs> if you guys heard that. Uh, but it is snowing everywhere, and it got 20 degrees. And when it gets 20 degrees, that snow stays. Now, I am very thankful. I am a Power Ranger. I am an electrical engineer for a power company. And uh, we had relatively no outages. I mean, knock talk on about wood. fortunate. Yeah, knock on wood. Uh, we were extremely blessed to get through this storm without having large-scale outages like we've had in the past when it snows. But, like, listen, small town Mississippi is not equipped for this. And <laughs> that's my it. beef of it all. It's like, like, I'm 32 years old almost. In April, I'll be 32 years old. I'm college educated. I've got a wife with a full time job. I've got three kids, one on the way. If I wanted to live in conditions like this, I would move north. But I, I have every ability to move. But I choose to stay here because my family's here. I like it here. Uh, love my job. I mean, North Mississippi is my home. But North Mississippi has got to get their act together. <laughs> it, it's, it's funny. You, We serve part of Tennessee. You drive into Middleton, and I mean, the highway is clear. Mississippi is just – I tried to go – I mean, it is Thursday night at 736 Central Time, God's time zone. Amen. And it has been – Four days since it snowed, and I could not go to Little Caesars and get a pizza because everything is closed. <laughs> everything is closed. And it's just like lights are out. Like It's it's like the pandemic. It's like mm. something horrible has happened right. because everybody is just cooped up in their home, scared to leave. It is yep. the worst. Yeah. I was talking to a friend from Myrtle Beach just this week. And for those listeners that are new, I lived the last almost six years in sunny Myrtle Beach. My last year, year and a half was spent a mile from the ocean in Myrtle's Inlet, just south of Myrtle Beach. And I was talking to a friend of mine this week and was telling him about how cold it was and all the snow on the ground. He goes, remember, you left the beach for that. <laughs> yeah, like, I know, right? I'm well aware. Like, Again, I, you know, I, I, I'm this, on Instagram you today. Have, you have no room to be complaining about anything. I hear you. I, I've had a good life. I'm not I like, again, like if my one beef is my balding <laughs> hair and my, and my love life, two beefs, like then I think I'm all right. But like I, I, I left, I left the beach. I'm seeing all these posts on Instagram today as I'm scrolling through it. Well, you know, cause I saw four patients in a nine hour day today because of all the cancels. Mm -hmm. um, and all these posts of people in Myrtle beach playing golf and going to the beach and walking the dogs. And I'm like, Bro, it's nine degrees here. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't none of that happening here. Listen, uh, I had a flat tire today on my work <laughs> truck, and then my driveway is a solid sheet of ice, yes, and it, I, is. it is sitting on the rim. I sent Rusty a video that I hope never sees the light of day, but my ring doorbell Don't make me mad. caught me working on trying to change my tire, and those lug nuts were frozen to the point where I was jumping on the four-way wrench and just – Busted it, cartoon style, you know, <laughs> Three Stooges esque, comical. Um, and at that <laughs> yes, point, I took my gloves off, I threw them on the hood of the truck, and I went inside. And I was like, <laughs> "All right, I'm going to get a different truck." <laughs> like, I had, a, I, had a, I mean, it was I, just stupid. Outside. I had a patient today bringing their significant other. Sorry, Mama, for this story, but I he I, he was standing there, and I didn't see him from the back. I just saw him from the front. I got his significant other all set up on the table i brought a chair i was like here have a seat man and rest He was like i ain't sitting he's i'm hurting i said why he turns around he's got those like light like acid wash colored jeans on uh -huh. and his whole butt is wet he turn around, turns around he goes i fell and bust my ass in this parking lot i ain't sitting down <laughs> you know no kidding every place that i've heard that is <laughs> shut down is shut down for liability reasons absolutely no one around or in north mississippi everybody's got a tractor with a box plate on it <laughs> Absolutely. Go out there and take care of the parking lots. You know somebody. But nope, we ain't doing it. We're just staying in the house and sitting by the fire. That's it. So then nobody falls. But, yeah, that's our Bucks best and beef for the week. We do that every week. So y'all tune in. If you don't like sports, you get a little bit of section of the show that's not necessarily sports-driven where we talk about the things that are really good in our lives and the things that aren't. And so speaking of things that are really good, Drew, we got to actually – we have commercials now. So if you've been listening to our oh. show for a while, we ain't – we ain't been that special. We teased him up. Like this next segment is brought to you by insert random business here, but we've never had a sponsor, but we can. 
tonight you can still be a sponsor absolutely we're still looking for sponsors but on a much more uh like pressing rate now so those of you who 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 have been reached out to just know we coming back all right um but make sure in the meantime make sure that you log into bluff city media bluffcitymedia.co on your little web browsers and become an insider there's several different packages different levels of involvement for you to choose from all of which give you instant access to all things Mid-South Sports. Again, you can sign up at bluffcitymedia.co and get access to all the great content creators from us to the Sane Asylum to Grizz901 Podcast to the Daily Grind to all these different great shows. You get access to all of us via Discord. There's a great opportunity to have some banter, ask us questions, talk crap, tell us where we're right or wrong on our shows, uh, get the latest updates and all the sports info you could want. Drew and I are heavily involved in Discord already. We're in there interacting. There's several different topics and, and trends and, and things you can interact with us on. So make sure that you hop on there, sign up today. Insiders get a ton of information, a ton of great content, a ton of great access to our, our merch store, which there's your little foreshadowing. We might be talking right. about some merch at the end of the show. But do us a favor. Go sign up today at bluffcitymedia.co. And right after this, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We're going to get dive into Grizzlies since Let's last see. week when we recorded. So Go. uh, we're going to have a word from Bluff City Media and uh, our counterparts here in our other shows. And then we'll get back and we'll talk about the Grizzlies. Not just the level of individual talent that mm -hmm. he plays, but, but it's also the, the level of his mind. We haven't gotten cross court open shot this year. Right. We haven't seen that pass a lot. Number one, you got to respect him going to the basket. There's a roller. I got to watch the roller. Uh, he has the mind to be able to say, I see all of that. But now I see this guy over here. I'm going to get mm -hmm. him this open shot. How shifty he is to always be going forward. It's usually side to side. Yeah. His dribble moves are side to side, but going forward. Right. Which is very hard to defend. I just want to get you as many times can I get you to do this. But for him, it's not here. It is here, which is with right, right, are, right. are his moves to get down the floor. It's awkward for a defender mm -hmm. to try to catch a cadence. Just you dribble. <clears throat> so now what I do is now when you go put that ball down, I'm going for it. But with him, there's no I, it's hard for my cadence. But uh, right. What's my cadence for you? Mm -hmm. I don't I, I don't know yeah. what it is. Tune in to the Anthony Sane Show Wednesdays and Fridays at 12 p.m. weekly on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. Who do you need to step it up? Outside of David Jones, I think David Jones is David Jones. I don't think you need him to step it up because he's been performing. Yeah, like I, he's David Jones. Like outside of him, he's fine. I think Quinterly needs to play better. In what way? Like I mean, he's facilitating the ball well. I mean, we like I don't to it to a twelve from the field's not cutting it. It's not. It's not great. It's not great. And I don't need a runner three from the top of the key with three and a half seconds left. Is Virginia the game where Jordan Brown is going to cook? Those dudes aren't looking to run the ball. Cook what, dude? I thought he was going to have a freaking night. He came out with that fresh cut, mm. lined up. Mm. And then literally within the first 15 seconds, missed a wide open layup. Yeah. And then picked yeah. up two fouls right away. I feel real lied to because I thought we were getting a 20 and 10 guy. I didn't think it did anything for you. Well, I, I, mean, think I think we all, we all thought we were getting a 20 and 10 guy. And we are getting that in David Jones. I'm not even getting 20 or 10 minutes out of the guy. Tune in to Tigers Untapped with TJ Willis and Trey Lasley every Wednesday at 3 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. I mean, that's kind of cool. We got commercials now. So if you've been with us from day one, OGs, welcome to the Two Bucks Sports Show. We in the big leagues now. So shout out Blessed City Media for getting those commercials. So as my colleague alluded to, we've had a lot of grist happenings over the last week. You know, Drew, we're not too far removed from a show that we put out entitled The Grizz May Never Lose Again. That might be my <laughs> fault. I might have jinxed us. So Grizz Nation, I'm sorry about that because I just caught up and in the moment. The word fan is short for fanatic if you're not all or nothing then you just right. need to be paying attention to something else and again i know there we've got no a lot half of steps no half measures in this right. business <laughs> and i know we've got a lot of new listeners and a lot of new new followers and i'll go ahead and say maybe some fans out there if you made it this far there's a term that we throw around here on the two bucks sports show and it's fade rusty 
Basically, no, if Rusty tells you something's going to happen, it ain't. So that might be my bad. Uh, Drew, we've had some some kind of some tough times, but Monday was not one of those days. No, no. Um, you know, it's kind of um, – Monday, the MLK Day game, is always a game that's circled as soon as the schedule is released every single year for Grizzlies fans. It is – one, it's, it's about MLK Day, right. you know. ML, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated in Memphis at the Warren Motel. Uh, civil rights was so big in Memphis and in this community in the 60s with, with MLK and all the sorts. And uh, it's just a big deal here. They have this symposium they bring in and they honor. Uh, they honored Ozzie Smith this year, which was my dad's favorite baseball player growing up. Part of the reason why I'm a St. Louis Cardinals fan. Um, and this year they were playing Golden State, uh, which – there's so many layers to this game going into it Monday. Yeah. You had Golden State, who we've had beef with for years. Mm-hmm. It was MLK Day. Uh, you had Draymond returning off of suspension for, you know, continually punching and kicking opposing players. All the time. Um, it was just packed for and, excitement. And essentially you had the Memphis Hustle. A lot of guys who have yeah. come up through the hustle, plus Jaron Jackson Jr., Yeah, and so uh, Grizzlies at large, we can get into that in a minute. But going into this game, you didn't really think you had a shot. You know, it's kind of it's kind of been the thing with the Grizzlies lately is that you know you just it's keep on a kick to the stomach every other day with an injury. the 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 relief you have now is who else you got to get hurt. I mean, (laughs) I mean, we are totally in. You know. triple a mode here we're in development mode and that is exciting and that was never more evident than monday against the golden state warriors yeah and and drew like like you said like this is development time right we're seeing what we have in guys like gg jackson and vince williams jr who just got his first big nba contract shout out vince man just phenomenal effort well worth every penny we're a big fan on this podcast of this show, excuse me, of getting your bag, right? And so get your bag, Vince Williams Jr. GG, keep doing your thing, man. It's coming. There have been three players, I'm sure y'all seen this floating around on social media, that have had back to back 20 plus point games under the age of 20. LeBron James, Kevin Durant, GG Jackson. And so and like I said, sports fandom is not a place to be with for half measures. Right. So as Grizzlies fans, I expect you to think that G.G. Jackson will be the next Kevin Durant. I mean, he is the next Slim Reaper, man. He is just <laughs> incredible. Uh, you know, Drew, I, every year for Christmas, I take my nephews to a Grizz game. It's more of a Christmas present for me, but I take them along just to enjoy. And so right. we went last Saturday for the next game. It was a loss, but uh, – I. Sorry, Grizz Nation. I know a lot of you are listening, probably some folks that work at the Forum. My cousin and I may or may not have snuck, snuck down courts. That's neither here nor there. Got to dab up the GG on an, on a side out and and it was an incredible experience and watch him just cook man he is so freaking athletic and he's got all oh, the yeah. raw skills everybody talks about how raw he is and like yeah I can see that but his game is polished that dude is a straight hooper and he just gets after it gets to the rim absolutely just a, a walking bucket at times and so watching him Monday night just cook against the, it, it, what is still you know everybody's talking about it, it's the fall of the Warriors and that that may be so. But they still Two have Steph to be Curry. true at the same time. Right. They still have one of the best basketball players of all time in Steph Curry. That's still a lineup that is dangerous and can put 150 on your head in a heartbeat. And we we held them to 107, like a massive win. And shout out Taylor Jenkins after the game for for pointing it out. Like it's a good win for the Memphis Grizzlies and the Memphis Hustle. This is a right. huge testament to how well we are working our G League, right? Because you see it like in Memphis, you see it with the Redbirds and the Cardinals, you see it. I'm a Cubs fan again. Iowa and Chicago, like you see these pipelines at work, and this is working. Like we're developing players. You know, every player that had a big game that night was a direct product of the hustle. We had two hustle players outscored trip. Like it's a huge right. shout nod to the Memphis hustle and the and the work that they're doing to get these guys ready for the league. Yeah, and I think it's a fun mindset to be in. You know, of course, you've got expectations coming in. This year, we're like, all right, we get through on our show. I said, if we can get through 25 games yeah. of Jaw suspension at close to par, then we'll make a run at it. And then Ja comes back and we've been terrible. And then we get going and was like, all right, I, I tweeted it out. I said it on the show, uh, you know, we're going to compete. And then you've just gotten 
body blow after body blow. And so right. now you're at a point now to where it's like, all right, well, let's just see what we've got. There are no losers now. You can watch this game, this Grizzlies game, with no expectations except for just seeing what you've got for the future. And with two people in particular, you could not be more excited about. Man. Vince Williams and Gigi Jackson. And yeah. I feel like I want to pump the brakes a little on Gigi. He had one, two good games. I get it. He fell to the second round because he was raw. He is supposed to be a college freshman right now. He reclassified to get into college a year early. His college was kind of a disaster, um, including, you know, kind of run-ins with his coach. You know, there, there were some things there, but he has done a lot of growing up, but he's still young. I, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Rusty, but I believe he's younger than Jaron Jackson Jr. was when he was drafted, and he was the youngest player in the draft. It yes. took time to be a consistent player. I believe that G.G. Jackson is good and will be good, but for the consistency to really set in into the player that he projects to be on a night in, night out basis, I kind of want, I don't want Grizzlies fans to expect 20 and 10 tonight and go five of seven from three again for right. Gigi. That's just not the, that's not the role he is right now. However, I am all the way in. I've, I've seen Vince Williams get like right now, game in, game out every single day. Gigi Jackson impacts winning in every single facet Vince. of the game. Defense, even scoring. He's a really good uh he's a really good spot up shooter. And he's, he's maniacal. When you when you're laughing and grinning when you're covering Luca oh. and Steph, that is straight maniacal. That is Batman villain level just evil. And watching him cook Listen. those dudes, put the clamps on them, let's go. <laughs> I you don't understand like I've um I've seen Ole Miss win a college world series in Omaha. I've witnessed the birth of my daughter. Uh, Steph being plagued by Vince Williams. Vince being so into Steph's head that he is just dribbling the ball out of bounds and off his foot. Just off just off of his game. In <laughs> just psychological warfare on Steph right. Curry by Vince All Williams. National TV. Right up there at the top. Oh, man. <laughs> and as Grizzlies fans, you hate to see national TV games because they always yeah. blow they never it. go well. You know, like Boston, we finally Christmas got a Day, Christmas like... Day game against Golden State last year. We <laughs> blew right. it. Like <laughs> You hate national TV games if you're a Grizzlies right. fan. Uh, and, but for that MLK game, one, it doesn't seem like we ever lose them. Um, mm -hmm. And so it was – it was great. It's a great day for the city of Memphis. Uh, it is. It was a great outcome for mm -hmm. the Grizzlies. Just, I mean, it, that's when you look back on the season, and you're just like, yeah, I remember that game. Of the 82 games, yeah. you know, 65 of them you will forget, not that one. And I was about to say the same thing, like to kind of put a bow on MLK, like you're right. We'll look at the end of the year, regardless of the outcome, whether we make the play in or it's a developmental year, or we make a big move at the trade deadline. We're going to look at that MLK gate. MLK Day game and say we got them. That was our day. And say that a few more times, real quick. No, we're done. No, no. MLK it's, Day game. Listen, it is well documented that we got Marble Mouse on this on this show. So if y'all <laughs> listen for a while, y'all going to hear some butchering and some name calling. That even just you just understand we're two good old boys from North Mississippi. We just doing the best hey, we can. Rusty, who is the head coach of the Philadelphia 76ers? <laughs> Philadelphia tell, 76ers. Tell all Tell all of our new listeners who the head coach is of the Philadelphia 76ers. So there's an infamous podcast where I may <laughs> or so may not have called uh, the head coach at the time of the Raptors. <laughs> He's um, at right now. I Nick Nurse. So I don't, yeah, so I don't mess it up. Like Nick Nurse is his name. I didn't want to butcher because all I can think of is what I called him thanks to you. And that would be <laughs> Nick Nolte. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nick Nolte, head coach, former head coach of the Toronto and as Raptors. As soon as I said it, like, like, it was literally like right here, and I'm like, no, nah, that ain't right. <laughs> um, no, but to tie to tie up on yeah, that, like, yeah. like I hear what you're saying about GG. We're both like you're a numbers guy as an engineer. I'm a statistical guy as a physical therapist. Like we look at the stats, we look at the research, and it's a very small sample size. Our end is very small right now. Right, but Dad Gummit, those two games have been fantastic oh, because he yeah. plays with a chip on his shoulder. Because you remember, his own college put it out there, and the reason he fell to us so late right. is his own college put it out there. They had character issues, and I don't well, know if you saw that. I know you his did. Coach on Instagram, <laughs> but still, that's neither here nor there. I have put some crazy like, I, oh yeah, 
Like I put Please, some crazy thank stuff God. on Facebook. <laughs> thank God I did not. You, you know, Twitter wasn't around then. I didn't you get know, Facebook when I was until I was a junior in college, and I am very grateful for that because even mm-hmm. then I put some stupid. Like it'll pop up in my memory sometimes, oh, yeah. and I'm like, bro. Um, but Rugan anyway, is chillaxing. Yeah, like Lots of Rusty Whitten is hungry and craving a slug burger. Like, who cares? <laughs> um, and if you don't know what a slug hey, burger I don't know is, what you, a better slug burger is. <laughs> you better ask somebody. Come um, on down. But I'll say this, like, like to watch. I know you saw it. I was having a different, like, my mother night was a little bit different, but I did see it. Um, like, just that wholesome reaction when Shaq hopped on that post game interview with oh, Gigi. Yeah. Like, just to see, just like the like. I, I, shout out Anthony saying again, you're getting two shout outs on the show. I ordered the shirt, the OMGG with that face of him making it when Shaq uh, hops on the mic, like just that wholesome interaction. He's got a good head on his shoulders. We all make mistakes in the heat of the moment. I've said some crazy things about coworkers or bosses or significant oh, yeah. others that, that, you know, probably didn't mean in the moment, you know, things happen. Right. But to right. watch you that interaction, up, especially right. as a young kid. Right. But to watch that interaction and to watch him hustle and his care for his t- and the care that the Grizz have for him, like when he was hooping the other night, they kept showing the bench and watching those guys just going nuts for him. Yeah. Like he's a good dude, man. And I'm grateful yeah. that he's a Grizz. He better get a full time contract. And I'll, I'm excited to watch him grow again. It's a small sample size, but it is a good sample size. <laughs> Yeah, I think if I mean it's definitely on the table that yeah. if he continues to ball out, given his opportunity, it was, it was what was so frustrating about Kenny Lofton Jr. Mm. is that he had an opportunity and he right. didn't take it seriously, and right. he didn't realize his opportunity was coming, just like Gigi didn't. Right. But a week before the season came, you know, season started, Stephen Adams has announced that he's missing the whole year, and you've only got one other center. You've got Xavier Tillman, and you've got Kenny Lofton Jr. But right. Kenny Lofton Jr. didn't do the legwork to to be a serviceable backup big in the exactly. NBA when he when it his time came. Gigi's time came and he's there for it. Vince time came and he's there for it. He stepped it's, up. It's, it's it's the thing that this podcast, this sports show, loves about Xavier Tillman. Yes. Is when, yes. when you need Xavier Tillman to show up, Xavier Tillman shows up. If you don't need Xavier Tillman that <laughs> night, but he's playing. He's probably going to stink. But when you need Xavier Tillman the most, That's Xavier it, man. Tillman shows up. And both of those guys have it in spades where they did their – they put in the legwork when they didn't mm. have to. And so when they had to, they've shown. Yeah. And it, it's, it's been just, great. You know, it's been fun to watch Vince's. Go ahead. Say hit me with to say, yeah, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. That's it, man. That's it. We we are a very much pro TA podcast here, but to watch Vince's minutes increase over the last couple of months, his bid is fantastic and you stepping up and owning his role. Can't like not you can't, blame. Right. Like at this point, he's a starter. Like, especially given oh, the yeah. injuries, like he's your starting two, right? He has to be on the floor. And right. you put him on their best player. He's what we always hoped that Dylan was going to be following TA, right? Like that, just that, that go getter that's just going to get in their heads. And Dylan was very theatrical and he loved the show and the drama part of it, but he didn't always show up on the court. Vince is humble. He shows up in sweats and a t-shirt and then goes out there and just balls out. And so again, this is going to be a very pro Vince and Gigi along with X and just those unsung hero, you know, players for the Grizz podcast. And I, I'm excited to watch those dudes grow, man. And so if y'all listen to this show on Friday that we are recording again in, in the, the Lord's time zone at 758 Central, Grizz don't play for another hour. Our esteemed colleague here, Uncle Buck, is going to drink some coffee and stay up and be on the postgame show. I'm going to try. If y'all know me, Drew loves to make fun of me. Oh, like yeah. 9, 930 is my bedtime. There's been so many times he's texting me at 11, 1130. And been better, like, though. I have. Well, I had a reason to get better for a while. I'm going to try and continue that. But Drew was Drew has texted me many times at 11, 11, 30. I'm like, you're the worst sports fan in the world because I've been asleep oh, for two it hours. Yeah. <laughs> but now I'm back in the proper time zone. I'm back in central time zone. So oh, yeah. Stay yeah. awake. So all that to say, the T-Wolves are playing next with our former, oh, captain, my captain, Captain Clutch, mm-hmm. Mike Conley. They got the, one of the best records. I think it's still the best record in the NBA. I think so, yeah. Playing at Minnesota tonight, we're on a massive road trip. We're going to cover something like 3,100 miles. The Grizz socials have been tweeted out all week. Just shout out Fly Grizz, Fly Memphis, whatever. But, again, so know that like, know that going into it, like we're two teams on totally different trajectories, right? Like the T-Wolves are hot. They're playing good basketball. They've got a lot of big help down in the post. Again, they have our former captain, no captain, my captain, Mike Conley. Um we're a 12 and a half point dog right now. And that, that makes sense. That tracks, right? Yeah. Because we, yeah, this team seems good. 
Yeah, T Wolves are good. They're just mauling people. And again, if we can show up, we can get 20 out of GG and a good game out of Vince. I'll be very happy with whatever result happens. So if you don't get a lot of T Wolf coverage tonight, that's why is because we're recording before the game even tips off so that we can watch it. But last thing before we kind of move on from the Grizz, our last section will be a little bit short, but like we're coming up with the trade deadline, Drew. We're just a couple weeks away. It's one of the first weeks in February, so we're just a few weeks away. I know we've kind of talked about it on this show a little bit. There's some names that keep getting popped up, and one that popped up today, it's really been popping up for the last probably like 48 hours. The Nats are big sellers. They're looking like they're going to be big sellers at the trade deadline, and they've got three players that we have been interested in in the past for years yeah like last year yeah, it came uh, out we were the mystery team that we were willing to give up four first round picks for mikhail bridges you know is there a trade out there for nick claxton and dfs like are there scenarios where we make a trade even in a year that's been injury riddled and we're probably not a playoff team do we go ahead and make that move this year with 24 and 25 in mind <clears throat> yeah and i think that's interesting obviously the grizzlies are not looking to acquire anybody on an expiring contract. I wouldn't think so. You know, obviously, uh, front office math is not my specialty. You know, it's and not something that uh, it makes sense to me. You know, uh, mm -hmm. but I would not, I would not expect them to get anybody on an expiring contract without right. having some sort of assurance that they would entertain sure. signing long term after the season. So we'd have sure. to look at contract situations and what they're doing, but. I don't think that the Grizzlies, we talked about this on the show last week, I do not think that the Grizzlies are ever going to just punt a season. Mm -hmm. you got to think. You've got – We don't We don't think. This is this is really the last season financially that you may have a little wiggle room because you've mm -hmm. got Dez's deal, you got Jaws' deal, you got Jaron's deal, which is one of the most team-friendly deals in oh the NBA right now. Yes. Um, and so you're kind of handcuffed and you're looking on the periphery of – I mean – you can go get a Mikael Bridges, but then, you know, your bench is going to suffer. And then, mm -hmm. um, so I'm curious Which, to see what they're going to do. I think they're definitely going to do something. Masai Ujiri said today that they're definitely mm -hmm. going to make some more moves going to the trade mm -hmm. deadline. So you're looking at maybe a backup big like Jakob Pertl. Um, Jakob, you can't get dunked on jo by Jakob. <laughs> you, you play, play with Jakob. Yeah. A name that has come um, up in our group chat a lot is Nas Reed. I, I think he's going to be way too expensive, but I would love yeah. Nas Reed to suit up in Bill Street Blue. Shout out Patrick Jones who putting that in our group chat. Like I would love to see that. Yeah, I would not rather have Nas Reed than I'd rather than have Nick Cat Clarkson. or oh, oh, no, yeah. Cat, Cat or uh, the big French guy, Gobert. Oh, Gobert or uh, <laughs> another name that keeps popping up too. Like I would love to see a package deal. Alex Caruso and Andre Drummond from Chicago. If we can work out like, yeah. a, like a two or three team trade, that's very intriguing to me because could you imagine, and again, this is way like forecasting, like a lineup that has Vince, Marcus Smart, Jaron, and Alex Caruso in it. Like, good luck, right? Like that's, you put yeah. the clamps on some folks. Yeah, you're playing junkyard ball at that I mean, point. But it's going to be, we're going to be in the mud. Let me frame it to you this way. Going into the season, you know, you every fan has their untouchables list. Right. Based on how the season ended last year, going into this year, your untouchables, Ja, Jaron, Dez, Marcus Smart, obviously, is not going to yeah. be, a, you know, he's not going to be. What are your thoughts on the remaining? Is any of these people untouchable? Canard? No. Uh, well, I'm just going to go through it. Is Canard untouchable? No. Um, Zaire. No. Roddy. No. David Roddy. LaRavia. Vince Williams. Uh, GG. Those are two that I would Conchar. hang on to. Conchar. Conchar is going to be a Nick, man. The Knicks are, for whatever reason, interested in him, which brings me to shout out to our colleague, a beat writer for the Grizz, uh, Grizzly Bear Blues, one of our colleagues here at Bluff City Media. M it, follow him on Twitter at NBA Mike, M Y K E. He has been pushing a Quentin Grimes trade from New York now for weeks. And then it came out today and he retweeted it again. Like, hey, I've been saying this for weeks. Quentin Grimes is somebody the Grizz should target as another guard help for us up top. And they're interested in John Conchar. So if you want Jitty, I mean, I would make that trade, man. Yeah. My thing is with the Grizzlies, kind of the point I was getting at is like how many pieces do you have that are desirable to other teams at, when it comes to players? You've got picks, you know, you've got a you got a treasure trove of second round picks, you've got most of your first round picks. Mm -hmm. 
So who outside of picks are you willing to give up? Because the only people that I can see gaining any value that we're going to pretend that you've got five on six untouchables, John, Jaron, Dez, GG, uh, Vince, Vince Williams, and, and Marcus Smart. And Marcus Smart. Mm-hmm. I don't know who wants those other players. So again, sure, maybe the Knicks want John Conchar. I think. I mean, okay, I think what's going to help but, too, like getting BC. Like BC had some bounce the other night before the MLK game. It's come out on Instagram, come out on Twitter. He's got some bounce back now. Yeah. He's still got a ways to go. He's he ain't going to be the he ain't going to be the normal player this year. But if he can show some promise towards the end of the year. I love Brandon Clark, man. If you're listening to this, BC, love you, dude. You're a great Grizz. I've always been a fan of yours. It's well documented on this podcast. I'm a oh, big sure, BC sure. fan. We both are. But he is on the block for me, though. He's on the block, and like Grizz Twitter is going to come after me with some pitchforks for this. If we can move Steven Adams, I don't see why we don't. Yeah, if I could be wrong. Like I said, front office stuff is not something that I'm super crisp on right now. I want to say next year is his last year of his deal. I think it is. I think he's um, on expiring contract. I love yeah. – listen, I'm a big fan. I interact with with the Steven Adams stats all the time. Like, he's right. been on the Grizz 901 podcast. I'm a big fan. I love the big Kiwi. I want him to be a Grizz until he retires. I hated him before he got here because of all the Zebo drama, but he's our dude now. And right. so I love – it's just like when Matt Barnes was here. Like, I didn't like Matt Barnes. I liked him. I didn't like him again. I right. love Steven Adams. I don't want to see him go. But if you can parlay Steven Adams into a a Nas Reed or a or a big that's got some some life, like some long shelf life mm-hmm. in those legs, again, this is a pro Steven Adams podcast. If you don't believe me, go back and listen to previous episodes. We're huge Steve O fans. Love Big Kiwi. But like on an expiring deal with a bad knee, if we can parlay yeah. that into something better, man. Yeah, I uh I'm in favor of that. Uh Back to BC for a second. Uh, it was reported by somebody that I can't remember. We are not journalists. No, we are not. Um, and so uh, if you said this, comment. I'll be happy yeah. to retroactively give you credit. On next um, week's episode. On next week's episode. But they said that uh, Brandon Clark was mentioned in trade rumors, and the big three of Jod, Jaron, and Dez nixed it. Though I know Brandon Clark mm. doesn't go anywhere. And so if that's a hurdle you've got to get across, then I don't know. You've got to – if Zach Kleiman has to feel very passionately about the return if you're going to include Brandon Clark in the trade. And so I don't know what they're going to do. I think they're going to do something. Uh, They're going to do something what I I would think would be somebody with at least two years on a contract. Mm -hmm. Me and my elementary brain, that makes sense to me. Uh, You're you're playing for this year, obviously. You're going to play this year out, but Mm – but you've got to have your sights set on next year when you've got right. everybody healthy too. You got to be looking forward, and so um, I think that's what they're going to do. We always make a deal. We use we usually make a deal right at the trade deadline, or, or there's usually it may not be as big of a splash as we're hoping, but I think that we're going to make climbing and the guys like I, in in climbing. I trust until proven otherwise. You know, you know, I think that there are some moves to be made that'll make us better for the future, make us better the short term because these guys are going to play for pride. Whether we don't bluff city, we don't bow down. We certainly we the we don't tank city. Um, we're gonna play for this year, but we're gonna make moves with twenty four and twenty five because twenty five is our window. And this is the last thing I'll say. I'll shut up, let you wrap up, and we'll move on to our next segment. But like twenty five is the window, right? Because you get these guys in next year. We kind of gel and mesh. Twenty five is the last year before like we really get hit with some cap stuff. And so if we can get to 25, we get a guy that's got two, three years on a deal. <clears throat> that's the year that we're targeting a parade on Beale Street. I'm just going to tell you right now, if there's a parade on Beale Street, A, we'll be there. B, oh, I will be I'll insufferable. Be I, yes, mm-hmm. and I will be insufferable on every one of my social media accounts if the 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 O'Brien trophy comes to, to Beale Street. Breaking. Rusty's going to be exactly <laughs> the same. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, my last thought was it's just, you know, the two buck sports show. Uh, we say what pops in our heads when it pops in our heads. That's it. It's um, it's, it's I would like to, I would kind of want to do some brainstorming about Luke Kennard. Mm. Uh, because when you get Luke Kennard, and I feel like this is kind of what we're learning, what maybe <laughs> other teams have seen is that yes, he shoots the cover off the ball. He's an incredible spot up shooter. Uh, one of the best in the game. Sure. And he, he's, no doubt. Num- you know, he may be number two, and 
you know, I don't know. He may be top two, not two. You know what I'm saying? Sure. But it seems like everybody's always been cool with getting rid of him. And it's not that I want to get rid of him. I love Luke. I think I, the idea of Luke seems to be bigger than the actual winning with Luke yeah. because he is such a detriment on defense and that you've oh got gosh. to have – You've got to have Marcus Smart playing next to him or Vince Williams Jr. playing next to him. And so that's kind of what's put me a little – I'm a little right. off the Luke right now to where if they traded him, I'd hope they'd get the right – because I still love the idea of Luke Kennard. Uh, right. When he's healthy, when he's consistent. And that's been the big thing this year is, A, he hasn't right. been healthy. Right. B, he hasn't been consistent. You know, last year when we got him from the clips, like he went on a freaking tear. It led the NBA in three-point percentage. <laughs> yeah. But you don't get yeah. that night in and night out, you know? It seems like he's the 48% three-point shooter, but he's going to shoot 100% for four straight games and then 0% right. for six, you know? <laughs> he's, he's, it's it's Rudy Gay all over again. It's a shooting yeah. guard that can sometimes shoot. I don't right? go There's, that far, you know? anyway, maybe that, that might be a stretch. You know, Rudy Gay hates Memphis, and so we don't talk about him much on this podcast, but – that's our Grizz Talk for tonight. Thanks for listening in, tuning in. We've got one more segment to get to. But in the meantime, if you're watching this, you're already there. If you're listening to this on Spotify or Apple, do us a favor. Log into your YouTube app. Look up Bluff City Media. That is the page where you're going to find all of our handsome mugs, ours, all the other shows. That I'm going there. I'm going there. Right. All of the, the shows that are going to be on YouTube are on the Bluff City Media page. That's Bluff City Media on YouTube by following You'll get access to all of our content, plus the other great content creators on our team. Don't miss a minute of all your Mid-South sports actions, from everything from the Grizzlies to the Tigers to SEC sports, everything that involves the SEC, Mid-South, Southern sports, you can find on the Bluff City Media YouTube page. That's where our show is going to drop at 3 p.m. on Fridays. You can see all the other shows throughout the week. Check us out, Bluff City Media on YouTube. Yeah, and I want to take it one step farther there, Rusty. Um, when you go subscribe, hit the bell. Turn yes. your notifications on because there are live shows. There's uh, three live shows, I believe. You've yeah. got Grizz Not a One that goes live after every single Grizzlies game. You've got uh, the Daily Grind that is live every morning at 9 a.m. And you've got Tigers Live that is the Memphis Tigers basketball post game show after every single game. Right. Turn the bell on. You'll get notified when our show goes public. Uh, 3 o'clock on Fridays. But you'll also get notified on every single other show that is incorporated in Bluff City Media, and we'd love to see you do that. Yep, absolutely. We'll see y'all after the commercial break. I'm, I'm just big on being able to vocalize what someone's role is. I mm. always thought my best coaches were the people that let me know exactly what you expect from me. Now, I might not like it, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Right. But if you come to me man-to-man to say, this is how we this is how we think we're gonna play you. Bang, bang, bang. And and uh, hopefully everybody understands. I, I'm not saying that this has not, not been done with this team. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying from my experience, we all have egos when we get to this game. Right. All of us. Every to the last person on the bench, you got an ego. But you're not gonna, we're not all of us can't be the man. Yeah. You're not, you, you, you gotta be able to say, okay, he's the man, but what do I do and what can I do to help us be good? And yeah. if it's vocalized to you, then you know exactly what I, and if I'm out there doing it. And now I'm not getting the result from you. Now we got we got to sit yeah. down and have another conversation. Mm -hmm. But as long as it is told to you, this is what we expect from you. This is how we want you to play. Then then I, I feel like, again, keeping this logo. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Tune in to The Anthony Sane Show, Wednesdays and Fridays at 12 p.m. weekly on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. All right, Christian. Yes. You are Penny Hardaway. I'm not. Yes, you are. Okay. Today, you're going to play act, okay? okay? Gabe, because you're a Jordan Brown apologist, you're going to be Jordan Brown. <laughs> I'm a Jordan Brown apologist. Okay. Okay. I'll take that. Y'all are sitting across the room from each other. I said, don't tweet him hate. And he's like, you're an apologist. <laughs> like, good God. But either way, continue. We're in a room together. Why did things break down? Jordan, we brought you in this year. To be the centerpiece of our offense. <laughs> <laughs> you came in out of shape. Let's call it what it is. Call a spade a spade. We play fast. Told you this when we were recruiting you. We play fast. One of the fastest paces in the country. You have to be able to get up and down the floor. You have failed at that. 
Oh, well, I'm leaving. So it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Tune into On the Bluff with Christian Fowler and Gabe Kuhn every Tuesday at 12 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. All right, guys, if you've, list, if you've listened to us long term, you know two things about us. We love the Grizzlies. We love SEC sports. So our last segment here, we're going to brought to you by, insert random business here that's going to sponsor this segment. We talk about SEC football. We're also SEC baseball junkies. And so we'll get to that towards the end. But, Drew, there's been some happenings over the last week or so that's going to directly impact SEC football. I personally love it. You know, Alabama's hired a new coach. You have the retirement of Nick Saban. He's moving on from his position. He's going to be still involved somehow as like a recruiting analyst, czar, whatever you want to call it. He's got an office upstairs because nothing tells – like it's like a team who – going to be like a pope. You know, right, just, exactly. He's, there, he's, a, you know? he's a figurehead. But nothing right. runs better than a two-quarterback system, right? So we've got two head coaches there. We've got Nick Saban running recruiting. we got Mike DeBoer, who sounds an awful lot like – like or, uh, Caitlin oh. DeBoer. There he goes. Oh, welcome, welcome to the Two Bucks Sports Show. <laughs> We got Kalen DeBoer, sounds a lot like Mike DeBose, which also sounds like a lot like six and six at Alabama. And I love like watching Alabama Twitter melt down, right? Because you have like these people that are going on there. I've seen some awful tweets, right? Like one old boy, you know, RIP Phyllis from Maluga. I'm glad she's not there anymore to call in a Paul Feinbaum because she'd be having a meltdown. But several people tweeting out to Greg Byrne not to hire Dabo. Well, they didn't. They hired DeBoer. All of a sudden, you've got a lot of players. You got one of the best players in America, freshman All American, Caleb Downs, hits the transfer portal. All intents and purposes, he's a dog, right? He's going to Georgia. Got Isaiah Bond going to Texas, right? So Alabama is having a meltdown. Welcome to reality because these players have 30 days that they can hit the transfer portal, but they can't get anybody in the transfer portal, right? Because it's closed. And so Alabama Twitter is having a meltdown, including my brother, my family. It's not fair, whatever. Well, welcome to reality, right? Like you're one of us now. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of poetic, you know. I love it. I'm here uh, for it. Yeah. It's like you as a six foot four dude complaining about how the top of your head looks. It's like, (laughs) I don't want to hear it from Alabama fans. Like you want seven, uh, six national championships in 16 years. Like, you know, it's time to pay the piper. And let's not get out of hand here. Alabama's yeah. going to be fine. That'd be fine. Alabama has never, ever, ever been terrible. Mm-hmm. Okay? There's plenty of talent. There's plenty of motivation by boosters. There's a there's a well-oiled system there that has been getting really awesome high school players because yeah. of the, the <laughs> crimson helmets with the white stripes. You know, uh, it just is what it is. Now, don't get me wrong. I will gloat. I, I <laughs> make, it makes me so happy to see Caleb Downs and Isaiah Bond leave. You know, but of all the years, fan, don't play, I'm just like, yeah, right? I know. like y- that's, y'all don't, we don't, we is, don't play Alabama. Yeah. So that's, we talked about this on last week's pod is that, yes, it was, you know, you had the first thought, which was like, thank God he's gone. And the second thought was like, why are we not playing him now? Like <laughs> Ole Miss just went 11 and two and you've got to, you know, all you got to do is beat Bama and get in the SEC West, win the West and get to Atlanta. And now we don't play Alabama when Nick Saban's gone. And right. now we have to play the rest of the SEC. No Alabama. Not that anybody wants to play Alabama, but <laughs> I'd rather play next year yeah. than any of the previous hundred yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Like this is like playing Alabama like circa nineteen ninety six, not yeah. Alabama circa two thousand sixteen. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, Alabama settles on Kalen DeBoer. I think Kalen DeBoer is pretty obviously their third choice, and I don't he's care a what really really yes. good football. No, no athletic director in the history of the world will ever say that they didn't get their guy. Right. They will make one every. This is this is lingo that you learn in. AD 101. Coach speech, is that essentially. You always hired your first choice, and you yeah. only offered the job to the person who took it. But like, we're, we're going to disregard the we're going to disregard right. the videos on Dan Lanning and and Sark's Twitter, right? Because clearly right. that had nothing to do right. with the Alabama job. And maybe maybe DeBoer was their fourth option because I didn't even think about Sark. You know, I I knew they went obviously they went after Dan Lanning, and obviously they went after Mike Norvell, and maybe they kicked the tires on. Sark as well, but 
you know, they landed on a really good coach. And it says something about the state of the program that Alabama has and what they've built that the sitting head coach at Washington who just lost in the national championship game was your third at best option and you got right. it. Like right. that's that's saying something. Yeah. I mean I agree. I, mean, I think yeah. you know I, I think D'Amico Rhines is a name that's on that list. If he doesn't make the playoffs, like there are several names that come up before Kalen DeBoer. Like, I, like no offense, like he seems like a for all intents and purposes sounds like a good dude. He's won everywhere he's went, but he ain't played Georgia yet. He ain't played. Yeah, that's true. Yet, right, like he, he ain't had played a those. meteoric rise. Right, you know, and, he went. You know, Ole Miss played was, him at. He was the OC at Indiana when Ole Miss right. played him in the game, which Bowl. was like four years ago. It was the COVID year. It was 2020. Three years ago. It was yeah. the shortened year. Yeah. Yeah. And then he went and he was the head coach at um, Fresno he was State. The head coach at Fresno State for two years. And he's been the head mm-hmm. coach at Washington for two years. It's a meteoric rise. Right. And I believe you make that rise on merit. You know, mm-hmm. this is a merit based business and he's never lost. Sure. So it's a it's a heck of a hire for Alabama fans. Yeah. Um, and so, yes, you're going to lose out. I mean, that's just the nature of the beast right now. If Lane Kiffin left Ole Miss right now, there would be 60 folks in the portal. Ole Miss would have to start from nowhere. Alabama has lost a lot of headline talent there. But if Nick Saban doesn't kind of smooth the waters a little bit, I feel like it'd be a lot worse. Oh, absolutely. You have Jalen Milrow gone. You have a lot of dudes that are leaving. And so, I mean, the only player that they might be okay with losing is that center who had an awful night against Michigan and snapped the ball to God knows who. It certainly wasn't Jalen Milrow all night. Um, But, yeah, welcome to reality, Alabama fans, because now you're one of us, right? You're coming back down to earth. You're not one of those programs anymore. You might get back there, and who knows? You know, DeBoer might be Saban 2.0. I don't think we'll ever – he'll be our generation's Bear Bryant, our generation's Newt Rockney. Like, he might be, right? Like, Saban was – is one of one. Like, he is truly the GOAT in college football. And DeBoer might be that dude. Time will tell. Maybe. But right now, he's an right incredible now, coach. I mean, sure, right now, but like, I, I don't envy him, man, because that's a job that if you win eight, nine games every year, oh, you get no, fired. Man. You get yeah. fired. That's a yeah. game. That's a job that if you ain't in the SEC championship game every year, you get fired. And so, you never want to be the man that follows the man. Like I said last last week. But maybe DeBoer is that guy. I, I think he's a stopgap before it's Lane Kiffin or Sark or somebody like that that steps into that role. But you know, best of luck to him. It's it's a not it's a not an enviable position, right? Like I do not I, I wish him luck, but I don't have great, you know, I don't have great expectations for what he's gonna do. And if you want to talk about mountaintops and valleys, <laughs> look no further than their rival to the south ooh, of Auburn. Because ooh, what a that Nick fire, Saban man. news comes out, and you've got to think that Hugh Freeze is like, This is this is the reason why I took the job, thinking that right. maybe one day I can last long enough. To catch Alabama on their down on their slide as Nick right. Saban requires it, he's got that opportunity right now. Last week, when he saw the news that Nick Saban retired, nobody was happier than him. Right. But what has happened since then? <laughs> is his OC has quit, his DC has retired, and Cadillac Williams, the heart and the soul of Auburn child, football, yeah. all, Auburn's. I don't want to say mascot. That is the wrong word. But you can help me figure out the word. <sighs> He is literally the heart and soul. He's, he's the figurehead he's, of Auburn football. Yeah. No, he, he's, he's, so it used to be Bo I mean, Jackson. Like Mr. Auburn. You right. Know? So Bo Jackson was from our parents' generation. Right. Cadillac right. Williams was that for us. Right. And and the guy who they were really tempted at making him the head coach last year after how he rallied the troops yeah. post. Uh, Almost the, beat Alabama. What, what was the guy's name? that? Uh, oh, uh, Harson. Brian Harson got yeah. fired. Yeah. And so – and. Cadillac, who is the guy that's going to be – it's like if Ronald McDonald quit McDonald's. <laughs> it's like – it's just – that guy's never leaving Auburn unless something's up. And Cadillac Williams just says, yeah. I'm going to pursue other things. Yeah. Like the quote and, and, didn't say, I'm taking another football coach job. He says, I'm going to explore other things as if mm-hmm. it was better to quit coaching football than coach for Hugh Freeze. Yeah, man. And only and, to make matters worse. And this is yeah. what is so in- – it's an indictment on Hugh Freeze, is that it has happened everywhere he goes. Right. He earns bridges with every right. single staff and to the point to where he his new OC hire, you see who they hired for OC? Uh, Derek was, uh, Nix. Uh, right, from Ole Miss. The, the running backs coach at Ole Miss. Derek Nix had been at Ole Miss since Houston Nutt was at Ole Miss. Yeah. And 
he never got an OC job before then. Right. So, like, I don't know what, I don't know what Hugh's doing there. He is obviously, know, he is obviously conducting his staff and this, his head coaching job at Auburn is kind of like what he did with conducting the NCAA investigation at Ole Miss, where he just walked <laughs> in the IPF, double birds, out the door he went, and just, <laughs> just laying waste to a whole athletic department. I mean, there's nothing that's going to make you less friends in Auburn, Alabama than running off Cadillac Williams, except maybe taking down the Pat Dye statue because, like, woof. Like, I mean, that guy right. is our How generation. about losing? How about yeah. losing the Iron Bowl in fourth and 35 <laughs> by blitzing two people? Right, by <laughs> running a spy on Jalen Milrow from fourth into 34. Like, I mean, he was like, he was basically standing in Montgomery and threw that pass into the end zone. If you, right? co- if you combine that play with his own missed career, he's fourth and 60 <laughs> away from really being awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. So best of luck to Hugh Freeze as we move forward with that. You know, the last thing we've no, got really – Good work, buddy. All right, is Drew, this week we are college baseball junkies. So if you watch our podcast, listen to our podcast, our show very long, you know that Drew and I are baseball junkies. We love college baseball. And so we hope to bring that to the Buff City Media and create some more college baseball fans because there's not much better than a Saturday afternoon at Swayze, at Duty Noble, Amen. Amen. watching Amen. college baseball, right? Like – Duty Noble is the Carnegie Hall of college baseball. I don't care what you say over there in Ripley, Mississippi, man. But like watching baseball in an SEC stadium is where and it is. And a big Mac is a porterhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, clearly, you've never been there. Anyway, I, I digress. But college baseball is, is gearing up. We are 29 days away from Drew and I's favorite season of the year. Ooh. And they released their rankings this week drew you know there's you notice who was not in the top 25 there were two teams that were not in the top 25 and two of your three (laughs) in the three years there's there's been a national championship uh, a winner the last three years yeah and two of those champions are not in the top 25 (laughs) both of those teams are the teams that we cheer for a hundred percent. They are outside watching. You know, you got number one. They're returning a lot of talent. Wake Forest. They're very much an analytics driven team, and they're 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 very much a, a a team on the up and coming. They are they're again they follow analytics. They've got some great great segments out there. If you want to watch it, Good log pitching. on, watch it. Yeah. Good pitching. They do a great job. Um, Drew, anything else to set out to you? I know our our, our defending national no, champs. I, it's were not really, in the top five. Gonna. Yeah, I wasn't going to go into it too hard because uh, there is a time for that. But the the news of the day for college baseball was that both of our teams, for sports that we love, that we we know are very niche to this area of the world, uh, Ole Miss and Mississippi State are two two of the best, if not the best, fan bases for college baseball. Both of our teams are in the top 25 – or not in the top 25 to start the year for the first time ever right. probably and, and there are and nine so, sec teams if you count texas um there are nine sec teams there you've got florida ooh. two arkansas three lsu four Tennessee six vanderbilt eight a and m nine texas 10 south carolina 11 uh and then you've got kentucky 24th which again kentucky's one of those teams like they start off hot in the preseason but they never really pan out very shout out to the team. right they're great on paper shout out shots up coastal carolina's 22nd from my former neck of the woods there in conway south carolina right outside of myrtle beach Ole Miss did get five top 25 votes. Auburn got 40. Alabama got 24. Georgia got 10. Uh, Again, Ole Miss with five. And then um, Mississippi State got none, which is very, very appropriate because we were awful last year. But Well, I mean, but Ole Miss was the worst team in the SEC last year. Mississippi State was the second worst. Second worst. So we we weren't last, but if you ain't first, you're last. So there's that. Shout out to Ricky Bobby. Two defending champions. Not in the top 13th and 14th in the SEC last year. So, but hey, yeah, man, if that's what we had to do to get Listen. the national championship, it was worth it. I, again, I'll never forget that phone call. I'm laying on my couch with COVID and I get this call from Drew in the stands in Omaha. And I'm like, you know, a good friend probably wouldn't answer or a bad friend probably wouldn't answer. <laughs> I won't answer. And I'm like, hello. And all I hear is cheering. And I'm like, all right, this is dumb. But. <laughs> We're going to wrap this thing up, guys. Thank y'all. For, if y'all still here in an hour and 11 minutes, thank y'all for being here. Listen, do us a favor. I've already kind of pitched it. Go to Bluff City's website. There's a merch tab, or you can go straight to bluffcitymerch.com. We're so excited to partner with these guys. Our merch line is coming, guys. There's going to be T-shirts, hats, coffee mugs, stickers. There's going to be some cool stuff coming out with our ugly mugs on there, uh, handsome mugs, as I said earlier, for the 2 Bucks Sports Show. But in the meantime, 
head on over to bluffcitymerch.com to find some great Memphis gear. Support our other shows that we've already queued up on here. Their banners have been kind of scrolling across the bottom here. We really appreciate it. If y'all go drop some coin, buy your loved ones some stuff. There's some cool Memphis gear there as well. Remember, insiders get a discount. There's so many designs that you can choose from. Drew and I have already stocked up. We've got us some shirts. We're wearing our Bluff City Media shirt. You can't see it, but on my laptop, I've got a couple Bluff City Media stickers that I'm rocking at work. Please go check it out. Stock up. Check out their stuff. Most importantly, though, I want to thank Haley Gann for putting up with our crap week in and week out. You know, we've said several times this is our favorite night of the week, and Drew gets in trouble every single time. Haley, it's my favorite night of the week. It's Drew's second favorite night of the week behind y'all's date night. But, yeah. again, guys, if y'all are here in an hour and 12, thank y'all. I hope y'all enjoy the show. hope we got some new fans yeah. that y'all understand. Like, we're goofballs from North Mississippi. We have a good time talking about sports. We, we hope to make y'all laugh. We laugh and have a good time. Again, we're, we're doing this for us. And if y'all tag along, so be it. We're Man, glad to have y'all here. Top. That's it. Y'all, it's and let me top. add, regarding the yeah. merch, uh, if you guys go subscribe, be a Bluff City Media Insider, there is a perk for that. You get a discount on merch. And so if you want a shirt with Rusty's ugly mug and my this beautiful <laughs> work of art, um, yeah, you can get that. Become an insider, you can get a discount. I can make you one guarantee, though, Rusty. What's that? Is that any merch that we have, we will be wearing hats. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so remember, when you listen to Two Buck Sports Show, this Two Buck Sports Show, there are no refunds for anything that we say. Drew, why is that? Yeah, because with the Two Buck Sports Show, you always get what you pay for. We'll see y'all next, next Friday, Friday, three p.m. Holla at your boys. Thank you for listening to the Two Buck Sports Show. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a rating and a review wherever you download your podcasts. Also, like and subscribe to Bluff City Media's YouTube page. For comprehensive coverage of all things Memphis sports, head over to www.bluffcitymedia.co and find out how you can become an insider. We will see you back here next time.